Mm. Let me tell you, if you're watching this, or those grown ups telling you about credit, because I, you guys in the US use it so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to lose my credit. Let me tell you something. Bill Gates didn't have credit. Yeah. Richard Branson don't have credit. Yeah. Donald Trump didn't have credit. Rich people don't have credit. Poor people do. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Kayongo. I'm excited to be here with you today at the Concept Kickstarter podcast. And I have a special guest here today, one of my mentors uh, who has been guiding me write great books. And there's one also which is coming in the pipeline. So be excited for that, which is coming out soon. Uh, today, it's a great day to have special guests like this come and teach us and we learn together with them and we can educate ourselves to increase our levels of understanding about certain things in life. You know, life is about learning and that journey is every day you are learning bit by bit by bit by bit. So I'm going to introduce to you a special guest is called Mr. Geoffrey Semaganda from UK, Uganda. He, he has been moving countries. Recently, he was in Dubai opening up a new location for their publishing company, action publishing company. So it, it, they are great company who have helped me uh, personally to write one of my great books, The Enterprising Entrepreneur, and also The Million Dollar uh, by Thare, which is coming out soon. So I want to go forward and introduce him to you and he can tell you more about himself. So, you're welcome, Mr. Shimaganda, please. Hey, Brian, first of all, I'm excited, man. Yeah, I'm really you. impressed the fact that you are you're giving it all. Thank you. I mean, for, for Ugandans, I think we seem to be within our shell. Yes, please. We don't, we don't make as much noise. We should. Yeah. Um, we should be like Nigerians yes, and make as much noise as we can. Or in the UK, we have um, the Afro-Caribbean that make as much noise as well. Yeah, You know, so I'm, I'm really excited and I'm impressed the fact that you, Thank you. you keep pushing. Every Thank now you. and then I used to question, is it really for real? <laughs> is it really for real? But, it's real but for now real. <laughs> I, I'm starting to believe. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Thank starting you. to believe. Thank you. Thank you were the only, actually, and I, I'm yeah. ashamed to say it. Yeah. Um, I've been coming to Boston for 20 years. Yes. You are the only person, actually, I've met. Yes. First person I met, yeah. and because you were interested in business, yes. And then the other gentleman I met is yeah. uh, Ron Mayanja, yes. Uh, mm. Later on, after mm. uh, because you're interested in business, and every time I came here, I always felt that ah, people are not interested in business, yes, and I'm, I'm really glad, and I, and I'm I would encourage, yes, <laughs> make as much noise as possible. There's so Thank many you. of us here. Thank you, and we need to understand the money. And the opportunities for us in the UK, we used to come here. Yes. We come here for knowledge. Uh, when I got to the UK, I was 16 years old. Um, I think the first country, I, as soon as I got a chance to come here, I came here. Yes. All our trainers and speakers and experts, they used to come from here. Um, I don't want to give away my age, but I saw Tony <laughs> Robbins. <laughs> no worries. I saw Tony Robbins yeah. in London. Yeah. Uh, there are people in this room who are not even born at the time. Yeah. In 1994. Yeah, I was just one years old. Jeez. It's the first seminar yeah. I went to. Yeah. Mm. I was 16 years old. I was mm. blown away with Tony. Mm -hmm. Jim Rohn actually came a few months later, and mm. I have his signed copy. He only produced a thousand copies. Mm. And this signed copy, I have one of the autographed. I, when I came to this country, like any other person True. Uh, in life, we, we, before we started this podcast, me and you in the back office, we've been talking about like how people live one foot here and one foot back home. They're like, I'm going back tomorrow. And they're they not specifying when exactly they're going back. But every time when you meet them, they're saying, oh, for me, I'm leaving tomorrow. Don't worry. I'm leaving soon. 
and they keep on with that lie of their entire life forever and ever saying like i'm going tomorrow i'm going tomorrow but Brian, that was in the 90s yeah the they can't be saying that today are they S- some the new generation is changing to realize that they're not going anywhere and their parents are realizing that you know what i have these buildings in uganda I have these buildings in kenya wherever i have them all over the world and my son is not even thinking about them he's just thinking about like okay is the building in boston they're going to have the interest yeah. but now they will not have even the interest on knowing how to transfer the title from your name to their name when you die because they don't care about it they don't even have a sense of attachment to it so for me when i came here what i, I thank god for is that I said I'm here. I've arrived and I'm committed to be here. Yeah. That is the one simplest thing which I did for myself. Is to say I'm here. What moves me out of here is that if I'm finding another opportunity here. But when I was in Uganda, I was saying as long as I can just even take a step in America, it will be a blessing of life. So what when I'm blessed to be here like I'm here, why am I now thinking about having a foot here having a foot there so i realized when i've arrived i've go here and i've got to commit to learn the systems which are here which i have to live by i've got to learn how I can survive in this particular system place i've got to learn how can i connect myself to the grassroots and the principles and the guidelines in this in this land where i've now come like me I'll, uh, so many people fear to talk about that they are believers but I'm a believer in the, in the side of being a believer I believe that when God blesses you to step in one particular place you are going to be blessed there as long as you believe that is a place where you've stepped to your feet so for me when I come to America I said now I've come to America I have to commit to America I have to learn how the system works I got to learn what how does this system work I've seen everyone goes to the bank everyone gets a loan from the bank everyone get, p- puts their money in the bank everyone yeah. g- gets insurance from the bank like everything is about the bank and I, i was like i was in uganda learning about uh, working with crane bank for if i bit why can't i enter into the banking system here in america so by god's grace i was able to enter into the banking system here I got a job with the uh, Digital Federal Credit Union mm. and that was one of my great opening opportunities to learn about the banking system. And because always I used to say, I see again, see people taking their money there, getting their loans there. Everything is working around the banking system. Ah, uh, I hear they're getting mortgages and I'm like the mortgage thing is also buying a property is coming here. So I was like I need to definitely understand this so that i can survive in this country so that i can do better in this country but to cut long story short is that my mentality from day one it was that right. i should not have a divided mind my mind should focus on where i'm at and where i'm at should be the principles i should learn and adapt to to survive that is the first principle of when i uh, one of the first principles which have helped me to talk about myself first because i want people to before i tell them what i've done why am i able to do them it is the that first commitment of being saying like i'm here i've arrived i'm not going anywhere i think the biggest challenge for some people um is the environment yes uh, i always tell people for me i was lucky um when you're 14 run away from home i yeah. i was in kampala for just not more than a year yeah from the world to kampala no more than a year i didn't really know kampala I only know Bombo Road, Ginger Road yeah. and Entebbe Road. I don't yeah. know other roads even today. Yeah. Um so I didn't spend that much time in Kampala. I came straight to the UK. I didn't have many friends to influence me. So for me it was simple. I either had to learn or I was stuck. So the only people actually knocked on my door, they were the Mormons. They were teaching, you know, the mm. you know the Mormons, mm. Latter Day Saints. They used to go around mm. teaching the Bible. They knocked on my door. Mm. And I'm like these young boys speak English, mm. American English, but it will do. I mean, still mm. English. So we used to go door to door teaching the Bible, mm. and they thought I was interested in the Bible. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm interested in the Bible, but yeah. I would just busy listen to how they They're speak, speaking. they pronounce words. <clears throat> I would practice. I used to hear them say, "My God, this boy loves this." They didn't yeah. realize I'm actually there to <laughs> learn. <laughs> um, but that I was looking for people to help me learn. You're right. You came. Mm with a specific purpose. I didn't have a purpose. I mm. came to buy some goods, 
mm-hmm. to go back home and sell them, make money, become a trader. That was yeah. my deal. Yeah. I got there, it wasn't that simple. Mm. But for most of our brothers and sisters, they come here and they meet other friends. Yeah. And other friends, they do what they do. And it's very difficult to walk away from that. So the reason why for me, I commend, I commend you when you start a podcast like this, because people need to see there are other ways of doing stuff. Definitely. Because for me, when I, I, I went to meet these guys, I knew I needed to improve my English. I need to take some classes. In those classes, that's why I met a guy who, who um, actually, one of the key things to mm. be intentional. Now, for me, I came from Uganda as a business person. Yeah. And I used to dress like one. Meaning that I had a jacket. Yeah. It was brown. Mm. I had a shirt. It has flowers in it. A tie had flowers too. Yeah. The belt, I think, was green or something. Yeah. My trousers, I remember, it was purple. Yeah. And the shoes, you know, those <laughs> shoes with two colors? Yeah. And striped yeah. socks. And I used to wear glasses. And I used to carry a briefcase. It, it's actually partly broken, yeah. but it was carrying. So I remember, I used to look like a Christmas tree, but this guy looked at me <clears> and said, what are you wearing? I said, listen, I'm a businessman. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how this guy told me, are you interested how to know more about business? Yes. I said, sure. Then he took me to a seminar, mm. a network marketing seminar. That's how I had people speak mm. about personal development and stuff like that. Now, for our community, I think the challenge we face mm-hmm. is that if we can basically let people be aware that there is another way, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we came here to learn so we can share what we know back home. The challenge we face today, people come here and they think they've reached. Yes. But here's the challenge. If I look at every of our, I don't care whether you're Nigerian mm-hmm. or South African or you can, if I look in your phone, don't ask that question. Ninety percent, if not ninety-nine percent, of your friends are you get from where you come from. Yeah. The worst thing is, they even watch more TV in Uganda. I, since Definitely, COVID, I've been yeah, in Uganda, yeah. but people used to call me in Uganda, and they're telling me that something happened on my building, and I didn't, I didn't even know. know. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if you live here, but your body. Your body's here, but your mind is over there. Well, they? They're not doing what you did. Mm. That if you're here, be here. In time management, we teach wherever you are, be there. there. Learn everything there is to mm. learn. And so tell me, how did you transition from the mindset of say, hey, I'm here like anyone else, yeah. but now I need to start to grow. Where did you start and how did you start? Okay. So the other thing which I did is that to get mentors to get people in different sectors of interest so i I realized uh for example when i was in banking i got my uh manager she used to know all the best line everything in banking she she's one who mentored me so much to get to know by the time i left banking i was at a certain level whereby i knew everything regarding most of the stuff in banking to underwrite a loan which right now to the level where i'm at these principles which I learned, these kind of things which I learned have been of impact to me because when I look at someone telling me, oh, I'm going to sell you this property for this price, already I've read, underwritten the loan yeah. before even I gave them an yeah. answer that it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. So having that lady, she uh, she was called me, uh, Kim Kremdik, so she really taught me so much about the banking sector. But then moving away from that, then I started looking into, I met my before wife, then we started, uh, when we met, how even we met? We met at one of our friends' graduation party. And we met with, uh, I was talking to different people. But for me, when I was talking to her, uh, because me and my dad, we have been doing real estate in Uganda. So I meet her. I tell her, oh, you know, I'm working on this in real estate in Uganda and all that. Uh, we are trying to increase, the, like, uh, my, my mission is to build a lot of affordable housing in Uganda and all that. And I'm like, am I, am I blowing up this? I met this nice chick and I'm, I'm talking about real estate in Uganda. Am I blowing it up? Oh, but to, to my interest, like, when I talk, I went back to my friends, I tell them, oh, my God, met that guy. I was telling her about, like, how I'm doing real estate in Uganda and... Uh, I'm for, sure they told you, what were you doing? What yeah, you doing? They, they were like, are you crazy? But me, not thinking that that's how she sure. 
she looked at me differently because everyone she was talking about uh, she was talking with on that party was just trying to hit on her and for me the way i my conversation with her it was just me because i didn't know so much about here but i met someone who loved to talk about business who loved to talk about uh things which are different from a common person yeah. how they talk about and when i met her she was reading a lot of books and for me by then i had not opened up my mind to that kind of sector of reading books educating myself in a different way i was just like with an opportunity of meeting people who know information and they were sharing that yeah. information to me ed training me or educating me now meeting this person for her she has met people who know stuff and also her she has been educating herself by reading books and all that i was like i need to get connected with this person and see what what where this can go so I got lucky enough I meet her again and then we meet again and we we started talking and we we're like oh we should do something impactful to our community then me and her we talked about oh we should do something like taking dialysis machines to Uganda so when, when me and her we met uh, talking about dialysis machines then we said but how does that even start about yeah so me by then I had not even read like rich uh, like uh think and grow rich all those yeah. kinds of books but then she she had read read all that and she's like no let us challenge ourselves let us do every tuesday we meet together here we go research let us say if it's about like registering a company let us go this week all of us research about that come back we put we we design a, a two page thing it has like 19 points and those points are breaking down how you do certain things in business so but how we developed it is by meet us meeting that that every that tuesday but meeting that every tuesday it gave me an opportunity to go like read a book yeah. because information is hidden sure. in this yeah. in information is here and the facts are always that people are willing to to give information when you come with the right questions yeah. so now this put me to the task of like getting to know how to ask the right questions because you may be there and you're like i want to learn about something but you don't know the right question to ask so now i'm here with someone who is like saying we should do something like about dialysis and i'm like even what is dialysis because by that time i was not in medical but yeah. for her she was like a nurse in medical and he said okay let us go for it so to cut long so short we start making research we come up with with, with idea but through doing that that opened up that information it is great in everything which you do because if you have not educated yourself enough you cannot achieve what you want to do you are like a person who is on the road who, who when you find a corner you can just jump off anywhere but you need to be very clear yeah. let people understand what education means mm -hmm. because people they are educated yes most people who came here they're very educated meaning yeah. they've been indoctrinated of what to think yeah not how to think mm -hmm. but what to think and the problem with that yes. that's how they actually when you look at our community the best compliment you can give them when you call somebody a doctor yes you know when i travel and last recently i've been traveling to the african continent and people end up basically calling me doctor yeah. and i'm like i love doctors but mm. please you know don't put me in that category Definitely. i'm not a doctor yes i'm just a person who's learning and researching how life basically work which is whatever worked yesterday doesn't work today so as long as you're aware what is education because people mm. say i spent hundred thousand dollars taking a degree so yeah. i'm educated yeah what you're saying educate yourself on things that helps you from to move from here to, to another to there. do there not to educate so that you go back to the same position where you started that's true i have a daughter yeah had a conversation a few days ago she finished a study she just she almost finished in one year she worked for a tech company now in london i said her best on what you studied and what you do you have 50,000 60,000 pounds in in student loan mm. how do you feel about it yeah she said that Um I can't say it was it was a waste of money. Yeah. Because it had, it gave me the confidence to do what I'm doing. But I would do it differently <laughs> if I were to start. Yeah. That, you know. Yeah. So so the so the point is is that we have to be aware of what we're asking our people to do because yes. this podcast is supposed to help them where to start. So give me an example. Who are the average people in in Boston? The average, the average people, in, people in Boston we are looking at like a someone, our community our community like yeah. someone as a CNA 
someone is she, What's a CNA? CNA is a nurse assistant, like a caregiver. Okay. Okay. You know, taking care of someone in their home. It might be privately, it might be through an agency. Uh it might be someone who is working in a bank, like a bank teller, like a customer okay. service representative yeah. in any accounting firm. It might be like a an, an entrance accountant, something like that. That that is someone you are finding here who is like a bookkeeper who is trying to say, okay, I'm making a living. But I, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm on the line of just survival. Okay. And so, they want to do something different. So how can you help that person? Where did that person uh, start? For me, basically, this is what I'm. I'm thinking about this person. This person should educate themselves, like because now they are having their liabilities here, and also this is their income. Now, where I want to help them is that. You have your income here and your liabilities here. But now you are, your age is determining. You are saying, I want to retire. You are 40. You might be 20. You can't be in your 40s or 50s and you say you are saving 20% of your income. Because now, then you are doing nothing of, of trying to be able to retire. You need to be now looking at be saving like 40% to 50% of something what you are trying to earn as income. So... You being able to pay your liabilities with the income which you're earning right now, it is not the, your end goal of life. Your end goal of life is you being able to increase your income. And the best way to increase your income is for you to educate yourself on things which can help you increase your income. So you are looking at someone who is in our community trying to do better in life, but they're having a certain income which they're earning, like an average person earning like $3,000. But that person earning $3,000, they're trying to figure out, okay, I can pay my liabilities, but why am I not able enough to start saving something for my retirement? Because they're thinking about at one time of life, they're not going to be able to have the same energy of what you're having right now to continue with the work which they're doing. Brian, yeah. when you're younger, yes. You don't think like that. Yeah. I, I can tell you. You know this. I know you're a younger person. I'm, yeah. I'm old enough to tell you. Yeah. When you're younger, you think the world. Yeah. First of all, you don't think you're ever going to get old. That's yeah. the first thing with a young person. You think you're never going to get old. Um, you think you're going to be healthy forever. You can sleep for two hours. Yeah. Actually, you can sleep for two hours in 48 hours and you still feel okay. Okay. You can still claim that I'm <laughs> Superman, Superwoman. Uh, there's one thing I believe maybe you should help people understand that whatever you put in there, it will serve you in the future. Yes. We have one of our authors, mm. um, he's writing a book, he calls it, um, effort bank. Mm. Effort banking meaning that everything you learn, it's banked in the vault in your internal memory. That where you need a key to open. Mm -hmm. So for most people, they don't realize. They think his wealth is about the stuff they acquire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's what you know. So if we can make a younger person remember that if you invested 10% of your income mm -hmm. in yourself, meaning take a class, yeah. anything basically improves <laughs> you. Learning wise, yeah. not buying yourself a new watch because yeah. people say, oh, I invest in myself. <laughs> That's why you should. Yeah, I have Just, a new suit. I <laughs> yeah, present <laughs> myself well. Uh -huh. yeah. If you can basically put 10% of that income in your ability to learn, to grow, mm. to be better, stronger, wiser, more competent going forward, there's absolutely no way you can fail. Even if you didn't save. Yes. As long as you've been actually investing enough in your ability to think, to solve problems going forward. Mm. When you don't have that, young person, we will, they're saving, retirement planning. Ah. But there's one thing we know is true. If they can basically invest in their ability to learn more, to mm -hmm. solve more of their problems, yeah. the rest can come a little bit later. Definitely. But without that basic understanding that fundamentally I need to be learning something. And learning is not just about reading books about reading, yeah how to make money, but in so many different things. Mm. People ask me questions, Brian, all the time. Really weird, mm. silly question that mm. if you look at it, okay, let me say this, maybe yeah. it's unfair to say. No. Um, here we are here to learn. We went to, yeah. if you see the people I went to school with. Yes. I was in Kampala. 
there's a gentleman, I know we went to school with him. Actually, we didn't go to school with him, but we're in the same, same age in London. Yeah. He passed me. I was like, no, 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 it can't be him. So I, I called his name yeah. facing yeah, that's in the opposite a, direction. Yeah. So I looked back and see if he, he turns around. Yeah. And he turned. I went to him, no word of a lie. I said, mm. what happened to you? Brian, I'm not saying I'm a younger person. Mm. The man was old. Yeah. To the level that you can't even imagine. And he said things like, he said, but, <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. are you serious? Yeah. Because when I came to the UK, my luck, my luck was I attended this person development seminars. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the first seminar I've ever attended was Tony Robbins. That seminar I told you, yeah. Tony Robbins. Or the big one that talked about um, health. And Tony Robbins, the only two things, few things he talked about in that particular event. It was a full day, but I only picked a few things. One, mm. you actually sweat at least half an hour every day. Meaning a bit of exercise. Half an hour a day, nothing more. Yeah. Drink water. Water. Um, uh, uh, exercise mm -hmm. and eat water content food. Meaning, any food that is seventy percent water, mm -hmm. just eat as much as you like. For me, that was it. I never done anything. Yeah, that that's it. Half an hour, bit of exercise, drink a lot of water, and drink water content food. That's it. I still have Tony Robbins' book. Yeah, up to today. The point is, is that what kept me healthy? No. No. But what I do know mm -hmm. is that every single thing I put in your, my stomach, mm -hmm. I'm aware. Of what you're putting in. What I'm putting in my stomach. Yeah. I don't let anybody cook for me. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah. But I'm not marrying you to cook for me. Yeah. Because... Are you a trained nutritionist? No. No. I fall in love with you. How can I make you a cook? Yeah. I need somebody who understands how my system works, my body works, can cook to understand how. But I'm not letting you because why if you cook for me? You don't know. Yeah. Until you learn how. How? If I go, I go to even Starbucks, I just, yeah. even when I've just been, just to order my coffee, mm. I annoy these guys. <laughs> I go at the back and say, let me see. Let me Let see. Me and they look at me like, because what? everything going to my body, it's my body. I yeah. need to decide what goes in here. Yeah. I cook. Not the best cook. Yeah. But I know exactly what I'm putting in my system. Mm. So what I'm saying is that we, if we let people be aware that going forward, <clears throat> learning is not about money. It's about everything. Then time before you know it, it has gone. Yes. For our people, we have access to everything. Mm -hmm. In your country here in the U.S., in, in, so in the United States, you have access to so much yeah. knowledge. And it's, all of it is free. It's free. Content. If you go to uh, meet.com mm, today, mm. you can find meetings on every single subject you can imagine for free. For free. And you can show up, sit at the back, listen, and learn something and go away. Brian, I run over a thousand seminars in the UK and I can guarantee you in those, I only stopped doing seminars in 2000, yeah. I think, and maybe 16, 17. Mm. But prior to that, we're the fourth largest conference company in the UK. Mm. I've never had more than seven Ugandans in my event. And I remember when they showed up, I, I was ce celebrating. You are celebrating. My people they, are here. They showed up. Yeah. Okay. They never. Okay. I've been volunteering to support the convention. Yes. In Uganda. That's the only the, the Ugandan UK thing I, I help. Mm. During this, the day when we have, we're talking about business, mm -hmm. even though it's not good enough, it's still, pol, you know, speeches, so but it's it still up, talking yeah. about opportunity mm. at least. We get a, like, like 300 people, majority of them are foreigners. Yes. But in the evening. Indians are in there. When the party is starting, we have 1,500 people shows up and the room is packed. Yeah, so what I'm asking my brothers and sisters yeah. that we are here, we have access to knowledge and it's mm. free. We are talking about that average nurse. Yeah. 
how can we help them improve themselves? My first tip. Yes, please. They have to invest 10% of that money in themselves. The job they do is not a job. Yeah. It's a place to learn. To learn. It's a learning place. They have access to technology. Yes. Systems, networks that don't even exist where they come from. Yes. If they were to learn how these machines work, they can actually, the same way you buy a car, mm -hmm. and by the way, I've noticed you Bostonians, you all drive brand new cars, right? <laughs> okay. The same way you go to the showroom and yeah. get yourself that car, <clears throat> is the same way you go to a company that make those machines mm -hmm. and get it on credit. Yes. And that machine, you mentioned the dialysis. Yeah, dialysis machine. machines, yeah. Whatever the machine is, yeah. if you take that machine and take it back where you're coming from, it will give you the income to buy your stupid car. Yes, definitely. Because now your Because the asset income. is basically doing that. Yes. So yeah. yes, every single job you can think of we do here. Should be a learning We have a cleaner place. in Netherlands. Yeah. She basically, her idea was... What I told her, she, I told her, write a book. She said, write a book about what? Yeah. Cleaning. Cleaning. So why? Because you're going to learn how this cleaning industry and business work. Yeah. When I came to the UK in the 90s, the third wealthiest American was running dry cleaners. Mm -hmm. So what are you talking about? Learn. By the time she finished, Brian, she knows mm. the entire structure, system, all the technology, and she set up her business in Ghana. She's now the third or fourth mm. biggest cleaning company in the mm. market, in our cry area, purely mm. because it was not cleaning. She's there to learn. She's there to learn. learn. She's learning the best way techniques, how to clean better, how to do it. Which the... school are you going to learn that? No, no. I... When we come here, you've been given a university to learn everything you can never have access to. And then you learn it for making a living. Yeah. You're learning so you can pass it on. Let me say this, and I know people don't agree. Mm. The best opportunity for a black person anywhere on the planet is in Africa. Definitely. Because we all look One the same. One billion people. No, no. We all look the same. Yeah. When I put a bid in London, when my company put a bid yeah. in anything today, they look at the owner of the company first. My name is Ganda. Yeah. Until 10 years ago, it won't even pass the first stage. No, no. Now no. it does yeah. because there's no man now to have a, a, yeah. a funny name. It's yeah. actually cool now. Cool. But before that, it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. So, but for us... Every single tool you can imagine. You see these tools you yes, please. up here? For you having this little setup yes. in anywhere, in Dubai, is $500 an hour for podcast setup like yes. this. Yes. Mm. But I can tell you, in Uganda, there's no way you can find a podcast, podcast you can actually one. hire like this for yeah. $100. There I isn't think. one. Yeah. But this gentleman here is doing these cameras here, running all this particular stuff. Yeah. If you were to replicate this, he can pick any country yes. and make it available there and they pay him two, three, four hundred dollars an hour. An hour. To use it. Because it's expensive for me to buy it, have it Definitely. when I only using it once. Once. But as a one off, yeah. Sure. Sure. Whether you pour you do furniture or you're a plumber, or you work. That's what you need to help our people understand. Yeah. You're not here to work. You're yeah. here to learn. To learn. Learning because you're going to teach people back Look, home. People back. But guess what? Don't worry. You're not going home. home. Don't worry about that. You're doing but virtually. your motivation to learn because you're <clears throat> teaching people home is going to make you better work here. You're going to love what you do. do. And your boss will see you every day that your attitude is different, different compared to the other person. That is how you grow. The reason why, Brian, I say every single person write a book, because it's impossible to keep educating yourself without a purpose. De definitely. If nobody's asking you a question, mm -hmm. you can't look for answers. That's right. I don't even monkey if somebody doesn't write a book. Yeah, yeah. But here's the problem. Nobody will ask you any question. They have no reason to learn. Definitely. But when you put this document out, then people are asking you questions. questions. Then you're forced to go and learn. Mm. Then that's how you, you grow. grow. Without that, 
you're not you don't you have can't. an identification of you because then w- what is in this book is that whatever i can explain to you you can read about it then you can ask me about it mm-hmm. Instead of me every day, I start, you know, me, Brian Kayongo, I grew up in this area. I did this and this and this and this and I talk about all that. But I just say, this is my identification. Sure. It's a business card. It's a business card. Everything. More than anything. You know, for years ago, yes. we never gave away. I mean, I have not had a business card in 20 years. I don't have one. I never yeah. had one. I've never done a CV. I don't even yeah. know how a CV looks like. Yeah. Because Mark Victor Hansen, co-founder of Chicken Soup for the Soul, he was the first one to ask me that question. Mm-hmm. I asked Les Bryan to come and speak my, on my event in London. This was 2004. Mm. When Les finished, I told him about my story. He invited me to go to LA to speak at Mark Victor Hansen's mm. event. But he told Les my story. He grew up during the war and so on and so forth. Mark invited me on stage and interviewed me. And people stood up, gave me a standing ovation. Yeah. And I went back to the hotel room and said, Mark, what happened? What happened? I said, he said, why? He said, why do those people, I've been, mean, why do they stand up? What's the big deal? Because in Africa, every single kid I can think of grew up the same way. The same up. way you grew up, yeah. He said, Jeffrey, because now they know you. They know a bit of your story. Yeah. Otherwise, you're like any other black guy. Guy who is showing now up Now yeah. you are different because yeah. they know your story. You Can you imagine against. that man had the audacity on the same stage, launched a water program, there and then, because I said yeah. that we need to drink water, you can't <laughs> use to clean your car. And he went back, came yeah. back yeah. on stage, invited me back on stage and said, from today, we're launching a water program. program. I'm partnering with Jefferson Maganda. 10% of that money goes to help people in Africa. Yeah. And the forms, by the way, he was the first person I've ever seen yeah. who have PDQ machines on every single table. Yeah. The past forms yeah. already printed, delivering home yeah. water to your door yeah. without bo- buying small bottles. Yeah. He argued about the environment and so on and so forth. You know how many people sign up on that particular, almost an hour of improvisation? Yeah. I was like, oh my, my God. goodness. Yeah. We are joking here. Now, in the meantime, I'm excited, but there's no one I can celebrate with yeah. because none of these people belongs to, to where I'm coming from. In those yeah. seminars, you were like one or two black people in the entire seminar network. Recently, when we, me and my wife, we went to the seminar, it was the same thing. We are like amongst the 5,000 people. Me and how we are counting black people. And like, we are like no more than 10. I'm like, where are the black people? I'm doing a blockchain course yeah. online with Harvard. Do you know how many people in that class? No. Over 200. Do you know how many black people in that class? One or two. There are some mixed race, yeah. debatable. Yeah. They look black, but they could yeah. be. There's only one black person. Do you know 70% of other people, where they're from? India and India, China. India and China. Yeah. Up to today, we black people, we are not interested in learning, in solving problems. We, we want, want to be to working for anybody, anybody who basically give us food. food. What do you do? We have to be a little bit more serious with that people and say, yes. don't worry, AI is taking over everything. Definitely. The jobs are going. Most of our people do manual labor jobs. Yeah. The computer can do it better and faster, faster than anything else. Today, I can ask ChatGPT to give me a solution of my answer or my health on anything I basically can think of. It's more accurate than the doctor. Yeah. Sure. Everybody will need to entertain to clean somebody. That job won't go away. But why are we the ones to be doing that job? On top of that, other people will be jumping in the same industry, industry. because now the only job will be... Will the be market like, pressure will just exactly. shrink to that. Yeah. So if we... And on top of that, we have our children who are now learning from us. The same trails. How would my child be wanting to follow my footsteps? Yeah. So... Let's talk about your book because you have a new book coming up. Yes, please. Um, what's the book about? So it, the book is about a million year before 30. And uh, the book is about certain principles which I want to share with people. Millionaire what, before 30. Millionaire before 30. 
Okay. Me and her, you we have been talking back and forth about that title. But no, I good. stand with that no, title. It's good. it's good. And uh, why why I stand with that title is that uh, there are certain principles which have helped me. You remember when we wrote this first book yeah. like uh the enterprising entrepreneur. This was defining my beginning of my journey. Yeah. Now this other book is like showing you I had the beginning but now I took the action. So th- that action which I was me acting upon certain things which I've been learning like the way you you told people like okay you have an identification here with your identification people start asking you questions yeah. and through those questions have helped me now to define even who am I and how am I moving forward as an individual and how am I categorizing myself am I categorizing myself right now as an individual I'm a millionaire before that eh? so but I want to be a multimillionaire I want to be a billionaire Oh I can't be a billionaire in the making but right now as of today I I identify myself as an enterprising entrepreneur an entrepreneur who is figuring it out as move forward as I'm going forward learning certain unique principles like in this book we talked about chapter 4 what is one of my best chapters in this right. book yeah. procrastination yeah. it is so good because and I took that you, you know sometimes you can write something for yourself like uh, like even this podcast i tell people i'm selfish enough when i invite someone like you i'm learning it's not even before them they learn it is me who i want to learn i'm learning from you as much as, like that's that's why you see when i ask questions they have to be helping me first i'm sorry guys but i'm being selfish to learn more so that i can do more i'm glad you said that because yeah. people make the mistake yeah they say i'm writing a book who's going to read it yeah and i'm like go look in the mirror yes the first pers- the first person you write the book for is yourself me myself you are the one who don't know what you think that you know yeah you know you say i know this how do you know that have you ever compared yourself with the best practices yeah. around the world you have never yeah. how dare you say you know the only way you can say you know something if you competing with other people But yeah. you've never competed before with anyone. With anyone. And you pretend that you know. Yeah. So the first person you actually educating is the one that is writing. So you're yeah. writing f- to educate yourself. Yes. To put your best foot forward. Yes. Compare to other people and say, "Hey, actually, that's how you develop the confidence." Yeah. Secondly, when you teach other people, We don't teach because we're helping other mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. I mean, otherwise you won't do it. Definitely. Honestly, you run it because yeah. listen, over the years I've been running seminars forever, but how many people applied the the principles anyway? Anyway. So if that was about them, I would have stopped. But no. You're doing it because you learn more when you speak. You learn more when you share. Yes. People say, "Oh, you share the ticket away." No. Yeah. You are the one who benefits. You see, human being was so slow. Yeah. That your child could be 16 and you still don't trust to take care of their own room. Definitely. Human beings, it could take you a thousand times before you believe in something. Somebody who hears something you say today, yeah. they have to hear it over and over and over and over for it to register. To register. You know, I remember first time I came here to Boston, um, one gentleman wanted to invite me. Yeah. And I said, no. because uh, I was heading to New York. And then he he called a friend and said, "No, you know when you're going to you know above my mungeria. Koga gai to come my me. Mo feri, mo gai ba feri." I didn't even know the word but yeah. Means. The reason I was excited about that book yeah of Millionaire Before 30. Yeah. Because anybody can be a millionaire before 30. Yes. It's the only time in your life We're so naive. Yeah. Not scared about anything. Don't have many people in your face. You don't have preconceived ideas. Yeah. It's the only time you can yes you can make it after 30. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard. You have to yeah. fight every single demon right. that you have in your head. But when you in your ideally yes. catch you in your teenage years. Yes. 20s. 20s. Because for me I told you To lie to people that I was a millionaire. Yeah. It's a lie. I just got lucky. I go yeah. to the country and I was told you can't speak English yeah. employ people who can. Yes. Okay. 
um, because in Uganda we're selling stuff, I knew I could sell stuff here, mm -hmm. but I couldn't speak the language. Mm -hmm. The next thing is, what am I selling? And the guy said to me, go, there's an exhibition, find out what they're selling. Yes. And the first people I saw, they were selling telecommunication services. By then, they just deregulated the industry in the UK. Mm -hmm. And the company first <clears throat> telecom were recru recruiting people. Yeah. I said, okay, can I have the card? I went back to network marketing environment and said, I've got a company. What do I do? He said, register company. Yeah. I said, registered. I said, okay, what about workers? Go to job center. Yeah. But still I can't speak English. I recruited a guy from network marketing yeah. to be the front guy. Yeah. With half mixed race boy, well-spoken, yeah. pretty. First month, we did 27,000 pounds in sales. Yeah. In commission. From there, we did insurance. Mm -hmm. I told you we sold savings plan as an investment. Yeah. As a savings plan. Any parent who had a child, yeah. they get child benefit. Child benefits 10 pound a month. month. We took that child benefit time into an investment in a savings plan. Yeah. We became the third with Abby. And we made a lot of money. Now, to say I was a millionaire then, yeah. yes, I made millions, yes. but it was not really that I was a millionaire. I didn't yeah. understand the concept. The concept of I got lucky. Yeah. I wish yeah. there was a concept. Somebody told me how. What you have is to yeah. make people do it with intention, knowing that I'm not just doing by luck. luck. The other thing I had other people didn't have is that I didn't have people in my head, mm -hmm. stopping mm -hmm. me because I was on my own. Yes. Most of the young people, there's so many friends around them telling yes. them what they can, what they cannot do. They have a lot of whispering in their ears. Yeah. So your book can really help them yes. to yeah. ignore everyone else. Because when you're in your 20s, what have you got to lose? Nothing. You are just getting it. You. The other thing, maybe just mm. before you, mm. let me tell you, if you're watching this, or those grown-ups telling you about credit, because I, you guys in the US use it so much. <laughs> I'm going to lose my credit. Let me tell you something. Bill Gates didn't have credit. Yeah. Richard Branson don't have credit. Yeah. Donald Trump didn't have credit. Rich people don't have credit. Poor people do. Do. And the system is designed for poor people to continue so spending. So if a grown-up telling you don't take risks because you're going to lose your credit, yeah. run away from them because they don't understand what they're talking about. Don't. People say, I can't do this because I'm going to lose my credit. People get completely messed up because they have a $10 yeah. bill they didn't pay in time. And they've been told that if you pay the bill on time, you're going to be... No. Read the history of Chess Bank. Mm -hmm. They were only giving loan to people who actually failed because the person never failed before. You can't give them your money. Definitely. They don't know what to do with them and they're mm -hmm. going to lose it. So in a way, failing is great. You yeah. talked about it the other day. Yeah. So let's be quickly wrap up. So in your book, yes. tell us the f <clears throat> a couple of things you can share with people they can apply today. Okay. Uh, this one or the other? The, uh, the, the new one. The, the new one. Okay. Okay, the, talk about this one. This one is there. Is okay. there anything you can share from this one? Oh, yes. The, okay. the, the, the one always I love to share about this is the procrastination part about it. Like I, I tell my people, my fellow Ugandans and uh, all other people of color, especially because I, I love to relate to them because I'm that kind of person. So when we come here, we, we think of like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start when, when I'm able to save enough money. I'll start when I have good credit. I'll start when I save enough money. I'll start when I finish building my home in Uganda. I'll start when I, uh, my kids are done with school. I'll start, you are always having that part of procrastination there's a situation in your life which makes you procrastinate so i'm telling it to you in my book here the enterprising entrepreneur i tell you about how you can avoid those certain things in your life which are delaying you in your because your life is already in what we call like you know when you're making a payment you yeah. are like past due yeah so pay your dues today don't wait to procrastinate on them because as long as you continue procrastinating on your dues your life will always be in the, will not see any future of any light in anything which you want to achieve as a person. So please don't procrastinate. Begin today, 
Find a way how you begin. And here, when we do this podcast, we are educating you to find a trail of line in everything which you are doing in life. If you are a nurse, learn how you can become a virtual nurse to any other person who wants to educate them to learn about certain skills which you know which they are not exposed to. If you are a, a technician, an electrician, set up a class to train other people how they can avoid uh, certain things when they are on their construction sites. There are certain things which you can teach others. And I tell people, you to be a teacher of anything, it helps you to educate yourself even more. So don't just be stuck at where you are working and you say, you know me, I'm just an accountant. I come here, do my books. No, be there and learn. How are these people doing this system? When I reach a time, because for me, when I started my accounting firm, I did it when I was in college. When I just got here, I was like, I met an Indian lady and I was working at the bank and I told her, you know what? I want to start an accounting firm. But I just knew the title of an accounting firm. Like you'd start bookkeeping for people. I didn't know even the depth of it. But I just said, let me not procrastinate on my future. Let me start an accounting firm. She gave me the guidance. She told me, oh, I'll give you a piece of the pie of the company. And we started together. But I took charge of the opportunity that I'm here at DC working as a tailor. I'm working as a customer service representative as I'm growing. But like, what else can I do for the skills I've learned? What else can I do to improve and do great? Like in the future can be owning a big uh, accounting firm. So that's how I met this uh, nice lady from the bank coming to deposit a check. And I'm like, I'm curious. I see you're depositing this big check. What do you do? Then she was good enough to tell me what exactly she does. And I told her, you know what? This may not be of your interest, but I'm thinking I want to challenge myself to earn more than what I'm earning as an, a teller. Then she told me, what do you want to do? I said, I love to do accounting stuff. And she said, let us start an accounting firm business. That's how I started it. So I challenged myself to know better. That is the key yes. point. If I go to a place, yes. So you invited to your party, yeah. uh, which I, I won't come, but just imagine <laughs> I did. Yes. And for 20 minutes, nobody asked me what I do. Yeah. I leave. Mm -hmm. I'm in the wrong place. Because there is no opportunity you no, see. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm in the wrong environment. Okay. Those people are not educated mm. to understand. Every single time you meet somebody, the first thing you ask them, who, how they are, how was their day, mm -hmm. next question. Mm. What do you do? There's nothing can make somebody so wealthy, so quickly, so fast, make so many friends so quickly by asking people a very simple question you just asked. Yes. What do you do? When you ask somebody what they do, mm. they tell you everything and they become your friends straight away because they know you're interested in them yeah. and you value them. Mm -hmm. But most of our people don't ask because they think asking is rude. Yeah. And here the challenge, I'm in Uganda. Yeah. I love my tribe. <laughs> but we have some of the most weird things that we need to overcome as well. Yes. Because looking at somebody, it was considered rude when we, when we mm. were kids. Mm. But you have to ask. Yeah. Okay. If you ask 10 people every day. Yes. If you say, I'm, I'm going to ask 10 people every day what they do. Meeting new strangers every day. Just yeah. Listen, you meet strangers every yeah. day. If you're targeted to ask 10 people, you will ask them as you pass every day. Yeah. Because meet, you see when you use the word meet new people, it's hard. Yeah. You have to meet new person. Yeah. But when you're asking 10 people, as you're in the car, you ask. Yeah. As I'm walking out, I ask. Yes. As I'm going to the train or, or to the car or to the supermarket, I ask. 10 I've done for the day. Even if you did three, I can guarantee you your income will jump twice in just three months just because you're asking the opportunity to be presented to you you won't even believe them so these are the basic things we're asking our people to learn to do especially in the country you see let me i know we, we're taking a lot of no, time but here's the thing please you somebody need to ask said, on that somebody point. Said I, I have to me, <laughs> somebody yeah. said to me an average house in the uk that was worth a million pound there was a library in that house yes remember saying repeat that again it's that every house in the 90s mm -hmm. that is worth a million pounds in that house, there is a library in that house. Yes. I was like, no. So I dressed up nicely. My mom was in the suits. I dressed up and there's a place in London called Dulwich. Mm. Uh, it's 
the wealthy part of part of London. This street really pretty. And so I went and pressed the bell because they gated homes, and they somebody usually come yeah. come out because they don't have security. How can you help? Hi, my name is Jeffrey Somaganda. I attended this course, and the speaker, an American, yeah, he said that your house looks like a million pound plus house. I need to confirm, do you have a library in your house? Yes. And because I'm a black kid, yeah. this guy looked at me and said, actually we do, come along. Yeah, yeah. He took me to show me. Every single home I went to, there was a library. So the one lesson was simple. People who are interested in learning, they're wealthy. Yes. People who are pretending to be learning, they're wealthy. Yeah. Even though they don't even read those books, but the fact that they have them. So asking questions made people like me more mm -hmm. because I was interested in what they're doing. I made more friends from asking basic questions mm -hmm. than anything else. If you bring it back down to our community, brother, you say one thing. Yes. Every single one of us, we've learned something or we're learning something. Mm -hmm. The only danger, and we mentioned earlier, is that we don't have reason to keep learning. Yeah. So we need to, away, to let our people be aware that please think about you're going to be teaching people at home. Yes. Not because you're going home. It's because you've been given a bigger responsibility. People die trying to cross over to come to this part of the world. Yeah. You are here now. <clears throat> to see what you see and just keep it yourself. It's not happening. If you're Christian, it's not right. That's true. At worst, you share it with your people, whether you're going to go back or not. But the chances are you are going to go back mm -hmm. if you're teaching something. Why? Because even me, after 30 years, COVID caught me in Uganda. Now, I've been doing business on the African continent. Yes. But for the first time, I stayed in the country for more than three months. Yeah. And this particular case was a year. Yeah. Then I made a decision that now, for me, it's, it's, it's about time. Yeah. Other people don't have to. But as you mentioned, a nurse mm -hmm. can support 10, 20 clinics on the continent. And they can get paid $1,000 retainer. Definitely. On the side. Mm -hmm. Helping, saving lives. Saving lives. They can basically get it machines, technology, equipments, mm -hmm. best practices. They're accessing documents that they can share, replicate back home. They can volunteer. I usually say to my brothers, never ever go back home. You have nothing to, lose, to, to, teach. to teach. If you have nothing to teach back home, don't go. Yeah. Send the money. Stay here. Our countries are so poor. To receive you and all you brought is your cash. Is your cash. No. You have and your work. cash is not even enough. But go back with a bit of knowledge. Ideally, put in some sort of a document. Definitely. Volunteer, go to your school first. First of all, inspire those kids to believe that one of theirs yeah. also went overseas. With. Secondly, you share something. And they're going to ask you questions. When you share back home, you find out who's doing it the best in the local market. Mm -hmm. And then you're dealing with it. Right people. Right Not people. your family and friends, friends, but those who doing it and they know. Yeah. And then you will know when you come back what now you need to look out for. Mm -hmm. What knowledge you need, need to acquire because you know what they need over there. Now, those pictures you've taken back home, who are you going to show them to? Your boss Most here. Yeah. One of the things that made me so massive in the UK, I used to go to yeah. Africa and I do those Training, Videos, yeah. And I show them back yeah. to my clients in the UK. They're thinking, wow, this guy really is not an yeah. average guy. African. Yeah. He wants to make a difference. Wealthy people, you can't bamboozle them by how money. They made enough money. They made already enough money. The one thing they don't have. Impact. They don't feel they've done enough. And all of a sudden, they look at you. You don't have much. You've done it more than they can ever dream. Now they say, Phew. that's how Christian community support churches in Africa, because mm -hmm. they think, okay, I haven't, haven't made enough impact here, but I can help somebody to make a bigger Be, impact back home, because they feel they need to. Whatever you learn here, you share it over there, you come back here, you share it over here, 
you grow here. You become a leader, a leader. in yeah. your community here. Mm. You need to be a leader here, not home. Home. Here. Yeah, in your community. But you won't do it here if you don't think I'm helping people back home. Oh, yeah. Because your, how we call it, our lack of self-esteem puts us so low we think we can't teach a white mm. person. And the final part, if you pick a topic yes. and you read half an hour every day on that one topic, topic in one year, you join the top 10 experts in the world on that particular topic. topic. And if you're in the top 10% mm -hmm. of people who know that topic in the world, you have no option but to get paid. You see, wealth is not the money you have in the bank. No. It's how you feel. Feel. That you can learn in the city. Yeah. And get paid. It's how you feel. So it's... That lady over there, she flew last time from Uganda. Yeah. Landed in California. No, landed in... Uh, uh, where? In Florida. Florida, yeah. Okay. We just had document. Mm. And she money to build a community and build a business. Mm -hmm. Never been here first time. Mm -hmm. Because she has something. Wealth is that feeling. Yeah. That if you took all the money, and you had the story, if you yeah. take all the money from all the wealthy people, distribute equal to all of us, all of us. it will go back in the same hands yeah. within one year. So what we're saying now, this whole idea... And, oh, you made money because you're in politics. Mm. No, it's not true. Mm. Made money because I have something to offer. Definitely. Let's talk about your final book and we we'll close the podcast. I yes. think we've been talking more. Th than oh, that. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, but but we are learning a lot, especially me. I'm learning. And this is a reminder to me of certain principles, which when we are writing these books, what we talk about to people. And the other thing, like recently, even before we talk about the last book, we, we uh, me and you have been discussing about like uh, the last event we recently have. Yes. The, uh, the concept. I'm told it was very successful. By thank the way. you. Thank you. There's you, a thank guy you. in Uber. He yeah. says, say, yeah, he's, he's got real estate business. Yeah. He's got a care business. <laughs> also had a very successful event. And oh I'm my like, God. Okay, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And like, and I loved that people came. And I love that people are hungry to learn more, are hungry to do it. But what I, I want people to know, it doesn't stop on coming. Like, you know, you said, like, you come to these conferences and get geared up and you're like, I'm going to, I've learned it, I've got it. But the way you maintain that momentum is like, what I want to tell people today is that you surround yourself with the proper mentorship. Like me, me, I surround myself with people like uh, Mr. Semaganda because he is mentoring me to guide me to become a great speaker, to become a great writer, to become like with his experience of being a great publisher, his experience of being a great business person. Uh, you don't just see me and say, oh, Brian is just building his image. There are certain principles behind me, me attaching myself to certain people because I don't know. Mr. Samaganda when I was young, but I challenged myself. I said, let me meet a new stranger in life. Like that's why he was telling you, like when you meet people, ask them, what do you do? So it is important to you as a person to challenge yourself every day, meet a new stranger, ask the right question to that stranger. And I'll tell you, your life cannot be the same. So to go back to the point of like, we had a successful event. I tell people right now, it's not just coming to the event and say, my God, I learned so much. It was great information. It was, no, it's now your time to sit down, focus, make a structure to what you have learned. And how do you make a structure to what you have learned? Sign up for mentorship programs. Sign up for people who can guide you to structure you in a better way so that you can succeed if that's your direction of life. And being educating yourself and also creating an identity of yourself. Like if you are saying, okay, I want to go into real estate. Yeah. The first thing you think about it, write about it. Start thinking about it indifferently. Create an identity of it. Then from that identity, people will ask you questions, which increases your knowledge, which continues guiding you as a person, get someone to mentor you to, so that as you're growing, you see certain trails or paths and say, oh, this is how this person grow. Because what people are seeing today, they are seeing the present. They don't see the past. They don't see the six, five years ago. When we, even the years ago when we wrote this book, they don't see all the, the, those trail paths. 
since mm. I've been in Africa, I didn't realize how privileged we were. Yeah. Until I went. Um, when you order a book like this on Amazon, yeah. it will take weeks. And if you get to in the wrong hands, you yeah. pay taxes on it, yeah. you won't even get it. Or we have Salabed. You order it, send a Salabed, Salabed, sent to you after a week or yeah. two weeks. God knows what. <laughs> um, so I've forgotten that I can order something. By the way, even in the US, actually, yeah. you guys are behind on Amazon delivery. Because <laughs> in the UK, I can order something now. What time is it? I can order now. Yeah. And by 10 o'clock this <laughs> evening, I have it. Yeah. So you leave it behind. <laughs> so i even forgotten that we actually have it so easy. Yeah. I don't care what topic that you're involved in. If you subscribe to Audible mm. and just listen to one audio book on that particular topic, which by the way, you can yes. listen to an audio book mm -hmm. within two days and finish mm. the book. It's got you 25 bucks in a yeah. month. Yeah. But the end of this year. <clears throat> become an expert in your level of understanding, your opportunity, your community, and, and in your engagement with people changes. Changes. You see, people say, I'm going to meet somebody. Why would they meet you? But if they were to meet you, would you be at the level of communicating? You see, That's when I was a kid, mm -hmm. when I was younger, I used to take my business plan to a bank. Yeah. And I remember they used to turn them down. Yeah. In those days, young boys in London, the only word we used to use, they're racist. Yeah. I looked at those business plans when I was 25. So I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah. These were not really business plans. These were just jokes. Yeah. I did not know. Today, those you guys who live here, you can buy a book on Amazon. I'm not saying do it. But yeah. I'm saying if you don't like it, you send it back. Yeah. You can order anything. You can listen to anything. You can learn anything. You can go to Barnes and Noble and sit there and read yeah. all day. These people don't have access to this kind of stuff. Every single topic you can think of, you can actually share knowledge with others. Yes. If you don't do that, yeah. two things are going to happen. One, time is flying. Two, you're going to start hating those around you because they don't seem to be making progress. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, maybe you are not. And in the end, you end up in the situation of actually looking at yourself that you're not making that much progress you're supposed to be. But I'm telling you today, technology is scary. That everything's moving so quickly. It's moving so quickly. But here's what I've seen since I've been traveling on the continent. Is that the only place... This podcast idea can be sold for a million dollars. It's on the continent. Yes. You can't sell this this here. Yeah. What you can do. Everyone this. can Take a set picture up, yeah. and do it for you. Yes. Okay. Mm. But you can sell this for a million dollars. As a business plan. Very well. Yeah. The other thing is what doesn't exist on the continent is documentation. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that you do, documenting it can it's make important. you a million dollars. Yes. Because nobody has. The Western company, all they're doing right now is to buy data from our markets yeah. by recording and take people's information. That's what you can do. So <clears throat> to end, my message is simple. Please don't go home. You have nothing to share. Yes. Put a simple, pick a book, copy some ideas, put a PowerPoint together, call your friends, your brothers and sisters, ask them to organize a meeting at your local school, your local church, yeah. and share something. So share you. something. Take mm -hmm. some pictures. At least tell your children here that, that when you went something. home, you, you made a difference yes. to people. It will force you when you come back here to have a better conversation to those people who you work for, who now are going to take you in a higher regard because they think I'm someone who is growing. Subscribe to Audible. It's 25 bucks if reading is a challenging for you. I guarantee you next year, you won't just know the opportunity within your industry, but be able to make more money, become more valuable, share more with others, become more useful to the community. People will take a picture with you when they meet you. I, do you know that when people meet you, they don't take a selfie? Have yeah. you noticed? Yeah. Because you're nobody. Yes. If I go somewhere and I... People don't ask to take a selfie with me. I, I'm like, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. So the key is, there has to be somebody goes home, I met Brian. Brian. Because you're out there doing something. And the final part is that 
waiting that all your friends will like what you do? No. Come so on. I'm going to work. You know, we know that already. Mm -hmm. So the more people don't like what you do, you're doing something right. Yeah. But to time will fly. I remember when I was 18 years old. Like yesterday. Because yes. that's the first time I got a, a, a birthday card. It was yesterday. Today here we are, my daughter, she's graduated, she's 23 years old. Time goes. Yeah. And no matter where you were, for us who are here, <clears throat> to behave as if we are over there, when you know the average income over there is what? Under, two, three, four, yeah. two, three dollars yeah. per person. But the population for Uganda, give you an example, 20 years from now, we're going to have 100 million people. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. 100 million. By the turn of the century, Uganda have 250 million people. Now, if that doesn't scare you, and we, oh, yeah, you and me, we're not sharing our knowledge. Yes. We're hoping someone mm. else will, mm. is a challenging part we face. Yeah. So for one, we don't share because we have a choice. Mm -hmm. We share because it's our responsibility Spirity. to do so. Two, we have to grow. Three, we have children. Our children watch us all the time. Yeah. For me, everything I post, I don't post to anyone else. Yes. But my three girls. If they watch it and they say something, I'm happy. You are Even happy. if no one else does. Definitely. Because for me, it's them. I want them to know that I'm doing something. Now, if they see daddy's doing something, yes. they want to do better. We don't want them to be doing what we are doing. doing. Because what we're doing is too, it's gone. It's gone. Technology will do it better. Yeah. We've seen now machines do even the, the manual jobs yeah. faster Meaning, and better uh, than we are. Like uh, recently I visited, when I was in Florida, I visited a company which we are uh, working with. Uh, it's called Luvitech, Luvi, something like that. Yeah. So what they're doing, they're designing softwares which work with robots to do security guarding in what uh, like facilities. Like they're working with Boston Dynamics and this is a big technology stuff. Like they can read when the, the temperature is so high. So that is safe not to have a human being standing there. So you hear that kind of technology. By the time, like it's 10, 15 years from now, you don't need anyone in the facility to run it. So. If we don't pick up whatever we're picking up today yeah. and put it together and start using it quickly here so we can learn because one thing what I've found we Ugandans we have every single skill you can think of we have it yeah we have access it here. yeah it doesn't matter whichever industry the problem is we have not really understood that if we don't put it on paper it doesn't exist it doesn't exist okay it's it's important Brian your brand because you have a passport Definitely. if you didn't have one one I you wouldn't, wouldn't have exist. An education. This conversation, the only reason it exists because he's recording it. Yes. If you didn't record it, it will this would be a lie. Lie, yeah. So how do we go around telling people we do what we do when we haven't even documented it? Definitely. And then we want them to know what we did 10 years ago. So we have to explain. Yeah. You see, the reason we're talking longer here, because you have a lot to share, but even uh, if we took two days, days, we still can't finish. Definitely. The only thing we can do is share references. Create an idea. And the final part, the reason why Africa is poor compared to the West. Mm -hmm. Because you know this piece of land where you are today? Mm -hmm. You can find a document on this property from... 18th century, 17th century. 16. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You go and find out, you go to in a place where you're coming from, you can't even find document <laughs> for 10 years ago. <laughs> yes. Let alone 20 years ago. Okay. That's right. I'm yeah. in Uganda. Yeah. But we don't even have a library. Yeah. What should be the number one protection we should be doing yeah. is to protect our history. history yeah. But we can't ask anyone to do it. I'm a Muganda, it's my response right about me. Then we'll go further, further to push anyone else to do whatever. That's right. But for income point of view, those are wealthy people. They're yeah. wealthy because they're worth where? Mm. On paper. Mm -hmm. How many companies do you know they're losing money, but they're worth billions? Yes. Because it's what they're doing tomorrow is what the marketplace value. values. It's what you are doing tomorrow. Not mm -hmm. what you did in the past. Yeah. It's what you're doing tomorrow. So you can only tell somebody we're doing tomorrow by putting it in writing. In the document. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing. So if we all tell the world what you're doing tomorrow, then they will decide who they value more mm -hmm. based on what you're doing tomorrow. Yeah. The West 
only rich because they're good at telling the world tomorrow we're doing incredible stuff. The UK, we borrow 20 billion pounds a month. Yes. How can we be rich? But because they're telling the world who you're going to trust the future of our world yes. more than us. Because they're telling you what they're doing tomorrow. Why do they want to go to the Mars? To do what? Mm. But because they're saying tomorrow, tomorrow, the future of tomorrow, bet on us. So somebody need to bet on you if you tell them where you will go, you're going tomorrow. Yeah. But if you tell them I'm getting a degree, I know where you're going to end up. They end up. You want to be a doctor? Okay, I know where a doctor yeah. ends. Yes. Tell us something more than mm. that. I'm a doctor who's going to do ABC. And for us African, it's so easy. All you have to say, I'm a doctor. I want to help a million people. people. You don't even, they'll believe you just because you're the only no one, one saying, saying it. it. Okay. Whereby here in the US, don't worry, the government taking care of it. But for us, we can. Definitely. People go on and complain about uh, my, my friend Hamis. Yeah. The boy is just telling, I'm changing everything. The narrative of Africa. That's yeah. all. You tell, you're changing the world. Yes. That's how people will follow. All of us Africans, especially East Africans, we hate to stand in the front. We like to be in the back. We call, we're bragging. No, we are not. Yeah. A little that you know, just share. And that's how we can't do it. Now, for your book, the final book you're doing, The Millionaire or, uh, by, by 30, by. please get that book out because... Grown We're up, launching it soon. Grown up, sometimes yeah, they're already bent. You yeah. know when the trees bent, try to undo it. Yeah, sometimes they break. But the younger people, and why not? Especially in America, where capital is so much available. Available for our people. How many of our kids basically subscribing go to <clears throat> San Francisco to places to basically come with the idea, put it because the plans and the programs are so childish. Child, yeah, but they're getting funding. And getting access to funds, or they cook the numbers up as they go, and we know this stuff. Yeah, but if they don't believe they can do it because they can't see anyone else doing it, then they can't. They can't start. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, like as you said, uh, as we are finishing the uh, the millionaire before that book, so we'll be launching it. I think we we think about around July time. So also, Mister Semaganda will be here. You you meet him. I know most of you are going to be asking me. I want to talk to him. I want to talk to him. So yeah. he will be here. I, I'm putting him on the spot that he has to show up here <laughs> yeah, at man. around the book launch. So <laughs> please. It's <laughs> yes. listen, my interest is if yeah. everybody listen somebody told me one yeah. thing and I really don't want to lie to you somebody said write a document if you write a document people will believe what you've written yes when you write people think you're smart even if you're not yeah but then once they believe that you're smart then they give you the responsibilities mm -hmm. and then you employ people to do the work yeah and that's all there is to it. But unfortunately for people like us of color, we don't even trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the minimum you can do, honestly, today, the minimum you can do right, is to okay. think about your ideas, get somebody put into the language that makes you look good, good, learn from what's been written so you can yeah. learn to be consistent about what you're saying. That differentiates you from about 10 million people, people. look like you. Yeah. In your sector. Then from there, you don't have to speak. Yeah. This document will speak, speak for, for you. you. You don't have to do anything. You look good and keep saying the same thing. thing. If you don't do that, don't worry. You go back to start from where we started. So that form. Document something. Thing. I don't care what it is yeah that will change everything. even if you are cleaner even if you are like an accountant even if you are in anything even if you, are, you, you you want to talk about f eating you like to eat write about it you can tell us more skills about how people who can, can say i eat chinese like this i eat indian food like this so they can help you you know like uh it's been a blessing for me to meet Mr. Samaganda uh, through his uh, company, uh, Action Publishing Company. They have 
really guided me because you know you you grow in skill like for example for me like i get to acquire all this knowledge but i'm like i'm writing down stuff i'm writing all these journals but how can i structure it they are the people who can help you structure it i want them to help you i want them to give you a, a guide manual like okay this is your story they will build for you what we call a business card this is an identity for you you don't have to talk everywhere you go to say okay I'm so and so. I do this. I started this. By the way, this what would they? What would do you say anyway? Yes. I mean, how would even a conversation start? Definitely. The only thing they can ask you questions to is about what you tell them that you do. Yeah. You see, a David Beckham, all the LeBron James. Yeah. They can go to certain shows, but when you come to sports, yeah, they're there. Yeah. So if you tell the world about what you're doing, yeah. Then they're always going to ask you about that. If you don't tell them about what you're doing, yeah. then they can't ask you no anything. One. No one. No and one. you don't even know what to say. No. So just for conversation point of view and to be accepted in the marketplace, mm -hmm. you tell them, this is what I do. But be different to the other person. Say, yeah. hey, I've been doing for some time. I even documented my views yeah. about that. Now, this is your business plan for your life. There's yeah. no business that hasn't got a business plan. Yes. This is your life basic business plan. And every 10 years, our business plan get upgraded. Rated. Because you've learned for 10 years. So for me, if I meet anybody over the age of 10, they have to write a book because Books. they've learned something in 10 years. In 10 years. Put them in a document, put the 10 years aside. Yeah. And then another 10. Why? Because it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. How is it so easy, but we still don't do it? It's the only thing you can actually put the value to it. Yeah. You can't put your degree. No, no. Amount to it. You can't say buy this paper. Yeah. And the other thing is, everybody has done what you've done. Yeah. Apart from those few. Yeah. And we, and you can ask anybody who knows me, we've done contracts for corporations, even government and UN or whatever. I've never submitted a CV. Yes. I just submit. A book. A book. Because somebody told me, you want to bamboozle them not to ask questions? Yes. Give them a book. Because only the smart ones who specialize in the area will engage. Definitely. Those who don't, yeah. they'll stay away. And usually people make decisions. Do they understand what you're talking about? No. No. So the one who make the decision maker, you want them to shut up. Yeah. You shut them up by... Giving them... Bamboozle them with a the document. Book. Yeah. Because they have a reference. If in case they wanted to question something... They have a reference. So you talk about the deal, not talk about your past. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if you show up and you have to explain yourself to people, you've already lost. Lost it. You need to show up when they already know who you, you are. are. If you have to explain yourself, it's too late. It's too late. So send the document before you show up in every single environment. Right. And, and this is, uh, let me finish on this one. <laughs> and for my brothers and sisters who are here, and, and this might, won't make me too many friends. But you don't have to sh share this if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. People in the diaspora, we hate our country so much. Yeah. And I don't get it. You see, since I was a kid, I've seen the president, the one person who ran this country. So I asked myself a very simple question. So should I put my life off for 30 years? Yeah. Our country is losing because we are engaged in a war that we can't win. Yeah. Now, if you're a politician, write a book on the subject. Yeah. Don't scream around. Because the process of doing this yeah. is going to get you to become a smarter speaker on the subject. Definitely. In my seminars, the, the rule was very simple. You don't have a book, you never come to my stage. Yeah. Because you have not put your ideas in the right it, order to even have the right to stand on my stage. To have facts together. So, yeah. anybody, whatever you do, whether you're a politician, or a nurse, or a mother, or a cook, videographer, you document that thing in a document that makes sense, then you have the right to speak. Yes. If we all really did some of that attitude change and we start documenting what we think that we know, mm -hmm. oh boy, we can change so much. 
Yes. Are the people doing the wrong thing? Oh, they do. I mean, come on. Do I really like the British government? No. What about your government, the US government? We are getting there. <laughs> no government is great. But They've one thing for there. sure. Yeah. If you don't like the government, volunteer to help them. Yeah. I have a very simple rule. Yeah. You hate something they're doing wrong. Guess Brand, what you yeah. do? Hi, my name is Jefferson Maganda. I'm an expert. What do you guys do? I'm sending you my book. I'm volunteer to help you give you advice for free. For free, yeah. For me, anybody who never given advice to a problem they see, I love you as my brother and sister, but I don't have that much time on this planet. Yeah. The average age is 75, apparently. We can live longer by 75. Yeah. Have you ever worked out how many days in 75 years? 27,300, give or take, days. Mm -hmm. Hours? 650,000 hours. Minutes? Under 40, 40 million. Now, I've used a lot of that. Yeah. Do you think I have the time to be arguing about things I can't fix? The diaspora, the Af Africa is depending on us. Those people, they're old, they're going to die. They're dropping slowly. Yeah, definitely. Somebody yeah. need to be ready, to providing take. knowledge, tools, skills, experiences, expertise. And for me as a businessman, I'm only interested in people fixing solutions. Sure. And each one of us diaspora members, we should volunteer to any government that right now, people where my family is in Uganda. Yeah. So I volunteer. I tell them yeah. I can give them my help. Now, I like that. That's what they say, but they, they should pay me to help them. <laughs> okay, then. Wait, they'll call you. Yes. But if you really care, yeah. just help. Volunteer. Because I've met, and I, this might get me into trouble, but I met some of these people. To be fair, they don't know. Yeah. Come on. Even here in the U.S., a senator from here, how does he know anything about cameras? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It's the only difference here, they have access to skills. Yes. Mr. Obama, has he ever run a business in his life before becoming a president? No. No. If the man never won a lemonade stand, yeah. how can he run a $50 trillion economy? Yeah. It's because they have access to people like you and me to give them the only experience, the advice they need to make everything work. Definitely. Our countries are suffering because we don't exist. We don't give them the truth because you don't exist. Yes. I'm if not a in the thousand system. Ugandans or Africans document, become expert, what we do, our economy changes just like that. Definitely. But you know how to rule a country? When people are down, you can rule them. When they're smart, hence why each and every one of us, you go home, you share what you know, you make those kids in school, you know, church, in your community, start to think better. And then... I've seen Kenya grow. Kenyans, you can't just bamboozle them anymore. Yeah. Uganda, we need to pick a leaf. You to, and for us, diaspora, man, we have a lot, lot to do. Thank you so much, Mr. Geoffrey Samaganda. And again, guys, we have this book on Amazon. Uh, you can check it out, The Enterprising Entrepreneur. And the second one is coming out soon. So, through... Mr. Samagana, I come up with these great ideas and it can give me the guideline how to write this book. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope we can do more of these to help our community and support them and continue uh, give, giving them some trademark of guidance how they can grow. Please. Man, you're doing it, man. You, Thank I'm, you. I'm, 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 I'm surprised that for us, yes. I mean, for other communities, they're doing it. Yes. But you're... I'm not going to be unfair to our community. You are the first person I've met. Thank you. Even the UK. Thank you. Who thank basically, you. but for me, everywhere I'm coming, in all my homes, there's a studio. Thank you. Everywhere. Yes. Even if you come to my hotel, I'm carrying a camera, I'm carrying a light, carrying everything, because that's how it's been. Yes. Home studio has been part of life for the last 25 years, and people are just discovering it today, and it's really wrong. Yes. But this, invite everyone to come and see let them set up one. Every single person to come here and say their story. Thank you. And by the way, that young lady you mentioned, who basically your wife, yes. who whatever, Thank I, you. she needs to be here, yeah. talk a bit more, because <laughs> that is something I think young people need to be aware that yeah. a man, 
it's just a dream of the future. Is yeah. that what you should attract to first? And not mm-hmm. somebody want to give you something today. Because for me, that's where you find a big challenge. Yeah. Our young women, they're looking for men to help them out. Yeah. But men were looking for women to help us. To help us, yeah. yeah. We're stuck. We're not the most smartest people on the yeah. planet. We're very disorganized. Yeah. But we need somebody who can actually at least nurture and understand the confusion that we have all the time trying to think and fix the world when we can't. So if somebody can actually give you a little bit of time to mm. help you channel. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. We love you. Bye-bye. Thank you.